Hi, oh. Hi. Hi, oh. Hi, oh. Hi, oh. It's off the softball we go. We're working on your mind. We're working on your soul. Hi, ho. Hi, ho. Hi, ho. Hi, ho. I know. Whatever, right? Dude, if you're not goofy, you're Donald Duck, and that guy's always angry. I don't know. What up? What up? So what are we going to talk about? Low batting averages and good attitudes? Ha! <laughs> I guess. What? What's happening? What's happening? I was, I was getting my paper thing. All right. Oh, you sent me your sheet. Got to print it out. I'm just getting stuff off my dirty desk. Season's over. Ready to start anew, right? So last season, which I call last season like January to August, right? To me, that's just one season, right? Because you don't take no time off between then. It's not like you take the month of May off, right? Yeah. You're still, you're, you're, you played literally from January to July, right? Yeah. Right. And then we started on this program February, middle of February, right? March. And and the reality is like, it's been concrete and it's done well, right? But uh, there's been a lot of the intentional effort, right? I think I did that backwards. Intentional effort. See how I did it? That's better there, right? Um, you, I, again, I could go back and show you and I'm going to make a little remix for each one of you probably towards the end of the year, of just where you were at, right? This little girl jumping on a computer screen, talking to this guy who's loud in your face, like, who is this mom and dad that you've put me with? Why am I talking to him on a computer screen? And and how is this supposed to help me get better, right? Um, and, and I don't know, do you think that it's helped you? Do you think that you've grown since January in the last eight months? Do you think that you've grown as a softball player, as a person, as a student, as an athlete, as a daughter, as a cool little person? Yeah, like, because I don't think if I joined this, that the week I had last week, I think I would have like had a mental breakdown. And it wasn't that bad. So right. I mean, again, like the goal is for you to not like want to not fail, right? Like we don't go into anything going, you know what? I'm going to give this my best effort. And if it doesn't work out, no, like the goal is it's going to work out, right? The mindset is, it's going to work out. We're giving that effort. That mindset is locked in. Now, can we control ultimately what happens? Yeah, we can control what pitch we swing at. We can control how we throw the ball, Right. But, you know, the outcome is is derived from the work that we put in. Right. So let's talk about that, because you had brought that up, that you were frustrated this week because of all the extra work that you had put in. Right. You said that. Right. Right. So yeah. why did that frustrate you? I just feel like I put in a lot of work. Like I was hitting every day. I was working every day. And I feel like I expected more out of myself when I got there that I would have done better, but it just didn't go how I thought it would. Heck yeah. Right. But, but when you say you expected more out of yourself, let me ask you a question. Okay. Did you give the same effort in a, whatever your number was that you would have given if your number was 900? Did you give the same effort? Do you understand yeah. my question? Right? Forget forget the result. Did you give the same effort every single game no matter what the result? Yeah. Right then 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 it's hard to say I wish I could have done better. I wish the ball would have went a different direction. I wish it would have out but if you showed up to the plate and you absolutely gave it your best effort, 
then explain to me how you could have done better. I don't know. Right? Like, I'm not trying to throw trick questions on you, right? You can give me the answer of, well, I would have hit the ball six inches further to the left and got on base. That would have been better. True. Right? But I, I want to... All right, let me go way back, right? You're what, 14, right? So let's go back probably 13 years to little one-year-old O, lowercase O, right? Right? Okay. If you would have only worked hard on working on walking for a week, would you expect yourself to be the best walker at the biggest walking event of the year? No. Okay. Now let's fast forward to five-year-old O. Right? You're on a bicycle. You're riding that bike for the first time. Right? And you worked really hard at it all week long. Right? And then you decided to give your best effort at a motocross bicycle race. Right? Right. So, I great. Right. Like I worked really hard this week. I worked real. I gave intentional effort all week. Okay. Great. I love it. That means that we're making progress. The plane is moving in the right direction. We are parking in the correct parking spot. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. But you, you let's do it this week. Let's do it next week. Let's, you know, because what did you say to me last week? You worked what? Really hard. Um, really hard, right? I don't ask many trick questions, right? You worked really hard. You said, I worked really hard this week. Cool. Now this week, work harder. And next week, work harder than that. If you take a rest week, whenever your rest week is over and you re-engage, right? Because, I again, you need that, Right. You've been going since January, so taking a week, two weeks, even three to disengage, to be able to re-engage is all you should be doing right now, right? So you smiled like, nope, I'm doing more. But I'm just I'm just saying, right, your body does need a chance to rest for a little bit, right? You want to do stretches, you want to do jogs, you want to do light workouts, okay, right? But you shouldn't be throwing heavy right now. Though That arm, those muscles, those tendons, they need time to recuperate. What feels good now could not feel good later if we don't take care of it today. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So, so, so this is where we're at now. Oh, we have reached the point of who am I? There's who I say I am. And then there's who I am. And if they're the same, man, we're in a really good spot because we either know who we are and where we're going right? Or, or we're trying to figure it out so that we can improve. So now you have to figure out who is O because we're coming into what second year 14s, right? Right. Cause you're, you're a, you're a 2010. Am I right on that? Yeah. Right. 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 Got you. So, so second year 14s, but you know, Jeff's going to push the envelope, right? You know, you're going to play some 16s in the fall. You know, you're going to do some things, right? Cause I, I I mean, you're, there's no switches. You're still playing there in the fall, to my knowledge, right? Any nothing's changing in your team schedule, right? Right. So no. you know, short of any surprises, you're still going to be playing for Jeff in the fall. So that means that you know you're you're probably going to play up a little bit. You're going to play some tough tournaments. You're going to play some good tournaments, right? I know you're playing and show me the money. You'll probably play in a couple other ones, you know. So so you're going to have an opportunity to continue to grow right so so now you have to decide okay i worked hard this is what happens in life and this is why people don't succeed i want to be 100 percent honest with you right now bro i want to be hype honest with you tonight right because this is why people don't succeed oh because i worked really hard this week i worked really hard this week and I didn't get the result I wanted. And 99% of people might try it one more time. And then if it doesn't work, they just give the basic. 
or they stop giving anything at all. And they don't continue to work really hard because people, just like you click on this phone, are instant gratification. And if I don't see it now, if I don't get the results, but I worked really, really hard this week. Great. Great. You're going up against girls who have been working hard every week for years. And I'm not saying you haven't, but you've never accentuated to me that I've worked really hard this week like you did this past week, which means in your brain, you feel like you gave more effort than you normally would, right? Right, but here's what you don't understand. What is that effort now considered? Uh. Normal. It's the standard now. If you can give that much effort last week, it's the daggum standard now. You can no longer give less than that effort or you're failing yourself on purpose. Short of an injury, an illness, a sickness, or something like that, right? Once you say, but I worked really, really hard this week. Great. Keep doing that. Set a new standard for yourself every week. Set a new PR, a personal record for yourself every week, right? Because, yeah, it's about confidence and it's about goals and all of that, right? But it's about Olivia. It's about Liv. It's about O. Oh, it's about you being able to understand that when you set a tone for yourself, when you set a level for yourself, that is it. That's the level. You have now raised the ground to that level. We can no longer let ourselves work less than the level we established. Now, just explain to me what I just said. That I need to work the same amount of effort every week. Because it's now what? Normal. It's the standard, right? It's normal. This is now when somebody says, who is Olivia? If I've shown them a 2.8 down the line, then that's what I am. And I got to keep working every single day to not only maintain that standard, but blow it away, right? If I'm a 1.8 pop time right now, then that's who I am. And I got to work hard every single day to blow away that standard and raise it. Now, am I going to have a throw where I slip, the ball grip, I don't have that? Sure, right? There's the exception to the standard, but it's not the standard, right? And the only way that we don't keep the standard is we continue to not do what? Work hard. Girl. Girl, if smart had a name, it would start with an O, end with an A, and have an L-I-V somewhere in the middle, right? I'm telling you, man, like you got it figured out. So now we just have to do what we call application, right? And, and I'll tell you, I'm very proud of you for what you did this week, right? Like you didn't get the results you wanted. You didn't get the results that your coaches wanted. You didn't get the results that your, you know, parents wanted. You didn't get the results I wanted, right? But you got the results that the game gave you. Did you try as hard as you could? Yeah. Did you give it absolutely everything you had? When you were at bat, were you locked in? Were you lasered in? Did you swing your hardest? Did you use the most intelligence that you have? Did you understand the game situation? Talk to your trust coaches and trust them. Rely on your teammates. Did you continue to cheer and support? Did you continue to pick yeah. up other teammates even when you were down? Right? Yeah. Was there opportunity for leadership this weekend? Yeah. Right. What's the single hardest thing to do on a team? Oh. Uh I know this is not a be trick a question, but a hard one. Well, it's just, a, what do you think? Be a leader. Be a leader, especially when you're not performing the way that you want. Right? It's easy to be a leader when I'm batting 900 and I'm, I'm eight for, set, you know, 10, and I've stolen three bases and threw three kids out. Everybody thinks I'm a softball hero, right? It's hard to be that same leader when you're 0 for 5 with a with an ROE, right? With a walk, two runs scored and an RBI. It's hard to be that same leader. 
Why? Because it doesn't feel the same as like if you were hitting every at bat. Yeah. I love it, right? And that's a valid, that's a valid thought. It's a valid emotion. Leadership doesn't feel the same when I'm not doing well, right? But here's the thing about leadership. Leadership is not about who. Uh, A-E-I-O. You, well, ha! like myself. Right. Leadership is about the team. Leadership is about pulling others up, right? So when we talk about leadership, we talk about the team, right? So again, it's it's everything boils down to your mindset, right? Your perception, right? If I hold my hand like this, right? How many fingers do I have? Five. You know that because you know I have a hand, but if you had never seen that before, how many fingers do I have? Uh, like one, three. Right. I don't That's know. Hard. I see three. Hard to tell, right? But as you change your perception yeah. and view, it becomes a lot easier, right? So, yeah. you know, you just have to continue to work on pushing that standard to the next level, right? And knowing that your results... You know, it gets hard sometimes, especially on a long week if you're not, you know, first couple of days, you're like, oh, right? But then if you hammer it out and you push through and you catch a groove, you don't worry about those first days, right? But you you had a rough week pretty much all the way to the end, right? Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> no. Did you, though? I because mean I don't know. I mean, I came out, I watched it, and it was like the last game – Whenever Rue hit home run number three, like you still had the cowgirl hat on. Right? Like, again, I you're still stuck on the mindset of, of results dictate mindset. That's where you're at. If I win and I'm over over 20, I'm terrible. If I lose and I'm 20 for 20, great. I got you. Right? Right? And all in our sport, it all comes down to how do you that's why, you know, pitchers being a PO, you gotta go out and perform in that circle. They don't have to worry about hitting, right? They still get to eat lunch, you know. But you gotta go out there and you gotta perform, right? And you know, you just have to continue to be that kid last week that said, I'm going to show up at nationals. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to bust my butt this week because I want to be ready. And the thing is, is I wish you would be able to see yourself for the actual results that you got. Because you did work hard all week. You did show up. You are or were ready to support your team. You did contribute, right? When you weren't put in the lineup, yeah, you had that split second of, uh, right? Socks. Not even going to, there ain't no positive affirmation in the world to where you walk up to the lineup card and you go, I'm not on the lineup. That's okay. Oh, you're the best player in the world. You can do it, right? That That's not, like, it's it's unrealistic for that to happen. Right. You have that brief moment of, damn, like, oh, like today was my day. If I would have just had my shot. Right. But there we are in a moment. Letting it dictate. For that brief moment, what happens now? How long did it take you from when the time you walked away from that lineup card to bounce back and get in the game? Um, probably when Rue came and talked to me to stay positive, and if he gives me the shot, to, like, give it my best. Okay, so you were up. So you were a little down. You were a little upset. Rue came over and was like, hey, girl, we got we got this 60 for me thing going on. You better get it together. Like, you better get your head right, you know. And, and you know, but, but isn't that what it's all about, right? Don't you support her when she's struggling? Don't you support your other teammates when they're struggling, right? Isn't that 
the 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 part of the game and you know won't you come out this fall and have weekends where uh you are in the 400 club and won't you have weekends where no matter how hard you try it just doesn't happen okay tell me the difference for you in both um there shouldn't be a difference. Yeah. Like I should stay positive the whole time, but that probably hey, won't happen. Hey, hey, so. hey. we're not going to start you just telling me things that you think I want to hear. They're probably. Well, that's how I was fixing different. it. I was right. fixing we're not, it. We're not going to do that. You don't get away with those. Well, sir. Uh, la, la, la. No, like be real, right? Like it's okay to say it sucks, but I'm working on it. Right. It's OK to feel that we're not suppressing any emotions here. I'm not telling you suck it up, deal with it, get over it. Right. I'm telling you, yeah, it sucks. Right. Yeah. Like you didn't get any gap shots this week. Right. Like you didn't get any, you know, hyped up. You didn't eat. You went hungry all week. You sitting there after the tournament's over like, yo, I got me a little third place trophy. But man, I ain't eat all weekend. Mom, can I get a ride home? Right. Like, OK, great. But where were you the week before? Where were you the week before that? Right. Okay. There you were fat and full. You were ready to go. You had been eating every single game. But now this week, what did I do? I worked really, really hard this week. So you want to make it doubly hard. If doubly is even a word, right? You do. You want to make it twice as hard now because I worked really hard. Now I must really suck. I'm no good. See, mom, I put all this effort in and it didn't work out. Maybe I shouldn't even done this. Then I would at least got a hit. Any of that? Yeah. I'm just saying. Right? Like, dude, so now, now what happens? What happens now? What's next in the journey of O? Um, just keep working, work out every day, hit every day, like yeah. stay, stay focused on my goals for next season. Stay focused on school. Um, got a new batting coach. So I'll be going there every week and stuff. So it's like, yeah, I'm just going to stay motivated for next season and keep working. Perfect. So let's roll into next season. All right, here we go. Right. So, so we are working on the 2024 fall softball goals worksheet. Olivia Lewis. So today is 7.30.24. Refraction and break. As the summer comes to an end, it's important to take some time to rest and enjoy life beyond softball. So what do you have planned over the next couple of weeks? Uh, starting high school, right? Tell me, let's talk about that for a second. How do you feel about that? Um, kind of nervous because like it's like going to be a huge school with a lot of kids, but excited. Is it, is it huge like a forest? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wish you would. <laughs> Anyways. All right. See, I had to chop that one down. No big deal. All right. Let's turn over a new leaf and go to the next question. All right. So very good. So use this break to recharge as soon as we kick off the fall season, fresh energy, determination, Taking a break is part of your growth process. You can't ever miss it, love it, focus on it, re-engage in it. You have to go do some other things, right? And that doesn't mean, again, you can't work out or hit a bucket a day, but you really should give yourself some time to rest, right? I know you're like, ah, oh, this weekend I'm going to re-engage and I'm going to fix it all tomorrow. It's not how it works, right? Give yourself a little bit of chance to mentally rest. Okay. Set three achievable goals for the upcoming fall season. Describe what you want to improve for each goal, how you'll track your progress, and identify who will be your accountability partner. Goal one, what do you want to improve? What'd you put? Being more explosive when I hit the ball. Being more explosive when I hit the ball. Explain. Um. So I feel like I don't really like put everything into my swing. Like I hit the ball and I'm like, okay, I got to run. So I don't completely finish my swing, and I feel like I definitely need to work on that. And how are you going to work on that? Um, when I focus on hitting, working on my load, so I can be more explosive when I hit it, and just, like, videoing myself and seeing that I am explosive when I hit the ball. All right, so videoing yourself every day when I hit to make sure that I'm being explosive, right? So 
So let's let's who's your accountability partner is going to be Peyton, right? So you're going to send Peyton some of your videos. Mom and dad are going to look at some of your videos. Your hitting coach is going to look at some of your videos. So I want you. Are you you got a pen? Because I'm writing this yes. down. I'm writing this down too, and we're going to keep this and we're going to follow up. Okay. I want a before and after. Right. So at your first lesson with your new batting coach or whenever you start, I want you to do kind of a before video of what your swing looks like, your bat at bat exit speed. So before video, right, your bat exit speed. And I'll send all this to you as well. Your bat exit speed. Right. And and really want a good video of your power to the ball. And then I want to work over the fall with really focusing on this, being more explosive. So I'm going to send you some stuff, uh, workout stuff, uh, some some stuff that you can do on your own, some stuff that you can do at practice with your hitting coach uh, about really getting through that ball, generating those hands and hip power. And really, do, you know, your hitting coach will give you all the specifics. I'm not going to work on that stuff. You know, mom and dad... Uh, are sending you to somebody, but we're gonna we're gonna work on connecting this, connecting these, connecting it all, and making that chain of events clear so that when you're in there, everything that this person is teaching you about this and Jeff is teaching you about the game and your teammates, we're we're gonna focus on putting it all together, and you're gonna see that the power that you get from being clear and trusting yourself is going to be just as much as lifting weights and, and you know, all of these other things, right? Because, because oh, this is the season where, like, bruh, we turn it up. Because we're showing up in January, February, wanting somebody to put us on our, because that's our first real, oh, right? That's how you're going to judge yourself, right? Based off that. Right. So let's give ourselves the best opera. And you know, I'm talking about tryouts and making varsity and all of that. Right. Right. So, yeah. so, so let's really gear in and work our behinds off over the next four months and focus in on every single part and really make someone have to be like, man, this, this is hard. <laughs> like, like this little girl came in here, like she was an inferno. Like, okay. You, you you understand what I'm saying? All right, we got a few more yeah. minutes. Let's keep it rolling. All right, so I want to video myself every day, make sure that I'm hitting and being explosive every day. Accountability partner, Peyton Clark. So before video, bad exit speed, power to the ball, be more explosive, and then an after video sometime in December, and let's really track progress. Between now and then, um, I'm going to send you a plan over the next week or two for you to implement over the next couple of weeks and we'll track progress with your sheet here, okay? Goal number two, what I want to improve, my mental attitude before every game. Explain. What? Oh, explain, sorry. Hey, welcome um, back, Jack. My name's Bill Hoops. I'm your local lead your journey coach and DJ analyst here. We are sitting here with Olivia Lewis and she just came back from outer space, folks. You would not believe the time that she had in that brief moment. It was absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and rick, 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 rewind and get it started. We are back. Goal number two. What I want to improve, my mental attitude, perhaps focus before every game. Uh, explain. <laughs> <laughs> um, like trusting myself before every game, knowing I can do it, and like trusting all the work I've been put. Well, trusting all the work I've put in, and like just trusting my fielding, my hitting, my catching, like whatever he has me do in the game. And understanding that I have to work really, really hard for a really, really long time in order to see the results that I want. Right? Because again, you have to remember, like, there's two phases to this game. Oh, there's there's 10 to 14, and then there's 14 to 18, actually three, right? And then there's 18 to 22 if you play at the college level, right? So you're just leaving this 10 to 14 phase where 
We're learning the basics, the fundamentals, how to run, how to walk, how to talk, how to hit the ball hard, how to trust myself, how to move, how to stay motivated, how to react, right? And now you're going to make this transition over this next year. And you're really just going to become a boss, bro. Like I'm, I just chuckle because I'm so excited about it, bro. It's like, I have this magical little crystal ball in my hand. And like, I just know, like you are absolutely going to dominate. And it just makes my heart happy. Like there's zero doubt. Like you wake up every morning and you go, man, I wonder if I'm going to be good today. And I, and I go to bed every night going like, God, that kid is just amazing right? That's where you're at. So you're going to make the transition over the next year into the 14 to 18 you phase, right? And now we go into the intentional effort part where we have to work hard every single day because now we're not only competing on the field to win the game, we're competing with 10,000 other girls for scholarships. We're going into high school. We're dealing with big girl things with older people, new teachers, classes, real world problems and stuff. And we have to build the confidence, the character, and the ability to be able to focus and become our best selves so that our character shines through and we are able to take on this big, nasty world that is the reality of a 3-2 bases loaded with two strikes and two outs, and this kid's throwing 71 on an inside pitch. Just saying, right? Life is that way every single day. So now we're going to prepare you for those things, right? So my mental attitude before every game, trust myself for the work that I put in. Yes. How will I do it? I'll talk to Peyton before every tournament. And if I feel stressed, write it down in my journal, right? And then I'm going to find a work process to realize, and I'm going to send this to you, to realize my own self-worth, right? And that I am not defined by a play, a game, a ball, a batting average, a number, a GPA, Right. I'm defined by my work ethic, my process, my ability to be able to push forward because, dude, if I don't believe it, how do I expect anyone else to believe? It? Come on. All right. Accountability partner, Peyton Castillo. So you got a double Peyton party here. All right. And that's good. I like that. You don't have the same person. You're you're getting different opinions from other people in the group, right? And that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Right. What do I want to improve? My pop time on my throwdowns. Cool. Right. So this is mechanical. This is uh, just practice repetition, working hard every day um, and really just manufacturing the best physical version of yourself um, so that, you know, you're in the best tip top shape. Right. Like no one's ever going to be mad at you for becoming an absolute beast. Right. No one's ever going to go, God, she worked too hard. Man, if she would have just slowed down. No one's ever going to come at you like that, right? So you get to wake up tomorrow morning and decide to absolutely kill life. Who holds you back? Myself. Yeah, I mean, again, not a trick question, right? I don't even think you hold yourself back. I think every time you learn how to do something, you jump right in. Right. Holding yourself back would be knowing how to do something and not doing it. Sometimes we talk to ourselves and we're like, I can't. But we still know how to do it. And it's just getting through that fear. Right. Can't is just spelled in a foreign language. It's actually translated fear. I know it's really not true, but it sounded good in the moment. Right. <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. It, but I'm just saying that they, they they correlate. They're the same. Can't and fear are are you know very very transparent and switchable. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah. Pop time. I want to throw. I want to improve my throwdown. So I'm gonna work on my mechanics. I'm gonna. I am going to become a pop time maniac. Right. Every practice I have a goal. Every practice I have a goal. Right. Let me let me give you a little. You know, 14-year-old Bill never played travel ball because it wasn't really a thing back then and my mom couldn't afford it, right? So what I did was I went out on the basketball court. This is real stuff, man. 14-year-old Bill would be at the basketball court and at the bottom of the key, there's a circle there with a line. Looks just like a pitcher circle, right? I'm sure you're familiar with basketball. 
And at the bottom of the key, I would shoot the 10 baskets, right? And if I missed the ninth one, I would start back over at zero. And I would not move to the free throw line until I made all 10. I was just a maniac because I was the shortest kid. I had the least amount of skill. I wanted to be on that court. I wanted to play. It was it. So every day after school, I'm talking about four years, 13, 14, 15, until eventually life took over and I had to go to work. But I was a maniac at the bottom of the key. I would make 10. Then I'd go to the free throw and I'd make 10. And then I'd go to the three-point line and I'd make 10. Sometimes I would be out on the court for three hours. You know how many times I made the ninth one and missed the 10th? Oh, my God. Right? Just mad. But it was a relentless pursuit. Did it get me anywhere? I guess so. I own a couple companies now, and I'm sitting here talking to you about mental resilience and being able to push through. Right? It didn't get me a scholarship. I didn't go anywhere with it. But point was, you know, you have to, if you want to increase your pop time, if you want to increase your mental attitude, if you want to be able to be more explosive on the ball, then by golly, do it. Who's stopping you? Who's in your path? No one. There's no goop of troopas that are walking by asking you to jump up and hit a block and get a magic mushroom in order to get special powers and go through them. I'm talking about Mario Brothers. The only thing you got to do Right? <laughs> do, 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 right? The only thing you got to do is just go do it. Right? You just got to wake up tomorrow and say, I'm Olivia Lewis. I'm a beast. I'm not taking anything less than 100%. And anybody who gets in my way, I'm just going to run through you politely. Right? Right? I'm not, I mean, why not? What? What is the, tell me the alternative. Nothing. I, I, if there is one, let me know. If there's an alternative other than the hardest uh, work and the and the best effort that you can give, and, and you can you can achieve greatness by not giving those two things, you let me know. Somebody tried to create it many years ago. It's called the lottery, but a lot of people don't win it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, let's keep going. Every time I go to the field. Uh, every time, excuse me, every time I go to the field time, I time it and I work on my hand speed every day. Accountability part of my parents, right? So mom and dad are going to be out there and they're going to be working with you and they're going to be pushing, right? And and these are the times where, you know, dad's allowed to be hard on you, like not nasty hard on you, like, rah, 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 but like, yo, oh, like we've been working on this all week. Like you tired, like something's wrong, right? Like, he needs to be able to push you. Somebody's got to be able to hold you to a standard. Somebody's got to be able to hold you to a level, right? And then you got to be able to give him constructive feedback. Dad, this is great. Mom, this is great, right? It really helped me. Or, you know, like, hey, this, this didn't work. And I didn't feel this was effective, right? And that's how you all build trust within your circle. And then and you can positively tell them how you're feeling and they can positively reflect back and sometimes tell you, look, Coach Bill has said that you can positively do this, but you can positively go ahead and march your butt behind that way before I positively put my foot in your behind, right? Like that's just called parenting, you know what I'm saying, right? But when it comes to the game in life, like you want to be able to express to them how they're coaching you, what you need from them, and, and then allow them to be able to push you just a little bit harder than that because we're always trying to raise the what? expectations maybe? yeah expectation standard all of that right same thing we're always trying to raise the standard if my pop time is a 1.9 right now every time i go to practice every time i go to the gym every time i study every time i think every time i work i'm trying to do what get it better Get it better. Look at all these trick questions I'm throwing at you. Get it better every single time, right? That's what I'm working on, right? When I go to batting practice, every single time I'm working on what? Being explosive. Being explosive every time. Not once, not twice, not during this lesson, not during this drill, not during that drill, unless somebody's telling you soft to contact for some godforsaken reason, right? Right. You're not a slapper, right? So every single time I put a bat in my hand on a tee, on a soft toss, in a live game, in a scrimmage, during a tournament, I am crack a lacking, knick knack, patty whacking. I ain't slacking. I'm coming out and I'm getting that ball, y'all. 
I'm coming to it, going through it. Ain't nothing left but to do it. That's it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that is it. And if you can turn that on, bruh, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide, baby. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's limitless. Everybody be like, oh. And you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's limitless, oh. And all it takes is you waking up every day going, you know what? This is it. This is the new me. And tomorrow, this is the new me. And tomorrow, this is the new me. Because every day you're new and you're better and you're focused and you're working and you're moving. Right? And you understand that you're allowed to make mistakes. You're allowed to fail. You're allowed to get it wrong. You're allowed to question. You're allowed to feel. You're allowed to have emotion. You're allowed to be a leader, right? Leadership doesn't make you sassy, right? It makes you a boss. You understand what I'm saying? Right? You're yeah. allowed to have all of those things. Because you're getting ready to dominate the rest of your life. It's telling you, bro. You ain't got no other choice. I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no other choice, man, because greatness is your middle name, right? That's it. You have to write it when you sign your name. Olivia Greatness Lewis. OGL. Ogle. Ha! <laughs> right? But if you don't believe that, like I'm laughing about it, we're joking about it, right? But if you don't believe that, what are we doing? I don't believe I'm great. I believe I'm what? Not, Not great. great. Not great. Yes. Yes, girl. These, 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 these questions are so tricky. Right? Right. So then I have to believe that I'm what? Great. Because not great is not an option. Boo. No. Mm-mm. Oh, it's too good for that. So let's keep working. All right, accountability partner, my parents. Positive affirmations. Over the six past six months, you've been practicing positive affirmations. Write down two affirmations that have helped you stay motivated and overcome challenges. Affirmation number one, believe in yourself. Word, can I get it from the back row? Well, right. You understand what I'm saying? Believe in yourself because if you don't believe in you, who does? No one. Tell me why you picked that. Well, like, uh, I feel like my biggest problem is believing in myself and that's what I need to do most. Okay. So you feel your biggest problem is believing in yourself. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Why? I don't, I don't know. I mean, like I see other people believe me, but I just don't. Sometimes I don't see what they see, so it's just like, I don't. Hold on, I got to tell Peyton five minutes because we're going to go over for a second because I want to finish. All right, so it's hard to do that, right? Right now, it's easy to do that if I'm, an, if I'm always achieving. If every time I sit down and take a test and it's 100% A, and every time I step in the batter's box, I'm hitting six, 700 every weekend. Isn't it funny how three things change everything? Let me give you an example, right? So we go to bat 10 times, okay? We go to bat 10 times. If I get a hit five out of those 10 times, I hit 500, right? Am I good? Yeah. All right. Take away one, 400. Am I good? Yeah. Take away one, 300. Am I good? Yeah. Okay, so there's three. Once I take away four, I'm at 200, right? And you don't have to answer that question, right? I don't want you to say anything is good or, or bad, right? Um, but in your mind, maybe after this weekend, you walk away with a 200 and you're happy, right? Um but in your mind, right, most weekends you walk away with a 200, you feel like it was crazy. Now let's go the opposite direction, right? So I go four for 10. Good? 
Five for 10. Six for 10. Seven for 10. I get balloons on that. Look at that. Okay. So seven for 10 is three. If I go eight for 10, bro. Right. Like I'm, I'm, people are just, man, they're throwing roses at me and I'm the queen of the castle. Right. Either one, the weekend is going to end and you have to go ahead and do it again the next weekend, or we'll be in an emotional roller coaster every week. Right. Which is kind of where we're at. <laughs> Which is good. You're getting there and you're getting really strong, bro. Like what you did this weekend with your lack of number results and how you and I were communicating and how you kept telling me this didn't happen, but this happened. It was a really good weekend. You're coming off of three or four good weekends where you're performing extremely well. You put in extra work throughout the week and then you didn't get the number results you wanted. Tough weekend for you. Right. And then it's a long week. It's like three, four, five days. Like I got to live in this mess longer. Right. But you did it. You helped your team. You got on base. You scored runs. You stole bases. You threw kids out. You helped your pitchers. You got strikes and, you know, things and, and saved past balls. And, you know, you, you cheered, you led, you coached, you smiled, you cried, you did all of that. You made it through. You survived. Right. You learned how to believe in yourself, hopefully just a little bit more. And then finally, you say, trust in all the work that you've put in. Explain. That, like, I put in a lot of work, so I need to trust, like, all the mechanics I have, trust in, like, what I've put in on the field and off the field to, like, believe in myself and everything I've done. Sure. And it's funny, like, you have put together the key to your self-confidence without me even having to do it. Believe in yourself and trust in all the work you've put in. Great. That's what we need to do, right? Because your positive affirmations tie right into your goals, right? I want to be more explosive on the ball. I right? trust in the work you've put in. My mental attitude before every game, believe in myself, right? Uh, what's the other one? My pop time and throwdowns. Again, trust all the work you've put in, believe in yourself. So Dude, you're good, right? You had a great first year 14U season, right? I, I, I'm i sure you played up in 14U a little bit, but this was probably maybe in the fall you played 14U. So your first 14U year, now, you you know, this is working. This is, this is doing what it's doing. You're getting better, hopefully more confident, hopefully, you know, and as you mature these sessions and as you and I become more comfortable, I'm going to be able to hold you accountable a little bit more. You're going to be able to grow a little bit more, right? Like I can't come in here and just go from day one, Olivia, you're going to get like, you're going to be like, mom, this guy's scary. I don't want nothing to do with this dude. Like this ain't working for me, right? So we're building trust as you're learning to believe in yourself, right? But as you grow and mature, you know, understand we're building you to be a champion. We're building you to be a leader. We're building you to be confident on the field, off the field, in school, in the real world, right? With uh, relationships, uh, friendships, personal relationships, family relationships, uh, team, uh, being a good teammate, being a good leader, student, all of these things is what we're working on. So, all right, cool. So we went over the goal sheet. Over the next week, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to rewatch our video here and kind of dig into your answers a little bit. And I'm going to give you a plan to build on over the next four months so that you have focused goals that you'll be able to track on the goals that you wrote down and things that you need to do. And, you know, we're going to see some pinpointed focus and energy towards these three things and you starting to engage in you. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, cool, bro. I'm hype, dude. I'm so hype. Like I really am. And I hope you are too, because you know, you set standards for yourself every day, right? And 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 the world is going to tell you no, and you're going to work really hard and get opposite results sometimes, and you're going to work really hard and get extraordinary results sometimes, but it doesn't change the fact that you continue to work really hard because if you're not, then what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Not working hard. Average giving mediocre effort, showing up just in practice. At practice, I'm giving half-hearted effort. Oh, Josh and Laura spend too much money for that. They spend too much 
I'm out on the ball fields. They got, you got older sister graduating this year. Mom's going through emotional turmoil. You know, you got a little brother coming up and now, now he's playing sports and mom don't know how to handle that. Dad's watching his little boy grow up. Like you're in the middle, kind of just figuring it all out. Right. Um, it's cool, bro. High school in a couple weeks. Baller, shot caller. I'm excited. Oh, let's get to work. You ready? Yeah. Let's keep raising a standard every single day, right? You are the standard. Make yourself better every single day. Maximum effort. Raise your hand up for me. Yeah. Yeah, right? You learned a lesson, right? That's called learning and progress, okay? And as long as you can continue to do that, greatness is only a couple feet in front of you every single day. You just got to go up and chase it. All right, kid, proud of you. Great year, great season. A couple weeks to get ready. If you need me, I'm around. Otherwise, I'll see you on group next week. I'll send you a plan this week. We'll go over it and we'll get you rolling. The next Thank phase you. starts now, killer. Thank you. See you, kid.